Gaming PC parts in 2025 can feel confusing. Between CPUs, GPUs, RAM, and motherboards, it's easy to get lost or buy the wrong parts. In this video, we'll break down every component of a gaming PC in simple, beginner-friendly language. We're an empowered PC, and we've been building high-performance computers for nearly two decades now for gamers, creators, and professionals. By the end of this video, you'll understand what every part does, how they work together, and how to choose the right components for your build. The CPU, or the central processing unit, is the brain of your PC. It handles every calculation and command that keeps your system running. If your computer was a restaurant, your CPU would be the head chef, taking orders, managing the kitchen, and keeping everything moving smoothly. Here's what you should look for on your CPU. The speed, otherwise known as the gigahertz, is how fast it can process tasks. Then the cores and threads. More cores mean the CPU can handle more tasks at once. Let's quickly compare the Intel 14 Gen processor versus the AMD Ryzen 9000 series. Intel's architecture is called the Raptor Lake, which was on the Intel's 13th Gen CPU design. The refresh means that it's been tuned and improved. It's like upgrading your last year's car engine to run faster and smoother. It uses a hybrid core design, so performance cores, otherwise known as P cores, handle demanding tasks such as gaming. Then there's efficiency cores, otherwise known as E cores, which handle background work to save power. It delivers excellent gaming performance and supports both DDR4 and DDR5 memory, making it flexible for different builds. Now let's talk about the AMD Ryzen 9000 series. The Zen 5 architecture is a completely new CPU design built from the ground up by AMD. It's faster, and more efficient than the previous generation, offering around 10 to 15% more speed per core. It also uses DDR5 memory and PCIe 5.0, which are newer and faster standards for connecting your components. Zen 5 is built for the future and delivers excellent performance for gaming and creative workloads. Just a quick tip, six to eight cores is ideal for gaming, while 12 to 16 cores is better for streaming or video editing. Now the GPU or graphics processing unit is part of your computer that creates everything you see on screen. It handles graphics, lighting, textures, and even color. If the CPU is a chef, then the GPU is an artist. It paints every frame of your game hundreds of times per second. The two main types of graphic outputs are integrated graphics, which is built on some CPUs, which is good for light gaming or everyday use. Then you have dedicated graphics cards. It's a completely separate component designed specifically for gaming and creative work. Now let's talk about the difference between the NVIDIA 5000 series and the AMD Radeon 9000 series GPUs. NVIDIA's RTX 50 series is built on Blackwell's architecture. Think of this as the engine inside of the GPU. It's designed for speed, efficiency, and realistic graphics using AI technology. It offers improved ray tracing for lifelike lighting, includes DLSS4 to boost performance, and uses GDDR7 memory for faster data handling. It's perfect for 4K gaming, AI assistant applications, and creative work. Now let's talk about the AMD Radeon RX 9000 series. Designed for efficiency and strong performance at lower power use. It uses GDDR6 memory along with Infinity Cache, which helps the GPU access more data quickly. It also features FSR3, AMD's AI-powered frame generation technology, which boosts performance and smoothness. It's an excellent choice for 1440p or entry-level 4K gaming. The simplest takeaway I can say is that NVIDIA is best for cutting-edge visuals and AI-powered games gaming, while AMD offers the best price to performance ratio and energy efficiency. Let's go into a little bit more detail of all the GPU's technologies. Blackwell Architecture is NVIDIA's new GPU design for the RTX 50 series. It's built to be faster, smarter, and more efficient, especially with the AI and 8K visuals. Then there's also ray tracing, a graphics technique that mimics how light works in the real world, bouncing, reflecting, and creating shadows naturally. With ray tracing, games look more realistic. Without it, lighting is manually simulated. Then there's also DLSS4, which is also known as Deep Learning Super Sampling. As AI featured from NVIDIA that increases frame rates while keeping visuals sharp, it renders the game at a lower resolution and then uses artificial intelligence to make it look like native 4K, which saves processing power. Then there's a memory type like GDDR7, the newest graphics memory used in NVIDIA's latest GPUs. It's faster and more efficient, letting your GPU handle huge textures and high resolution graphics more easily. Then there's AMD's RDNA 
DNA 4 architecture, AMD's newest GPU design that focuses on delivering more performance while using less energy. It improves ray tracing and overall smoothness during gameplay. What comes with AMD GPUs is GDDR6 and Infinity Cache. GDDR6 is slightly older than GDDR7, but it's still very fast. Infinity Cache is built-in memory system that stores frequently used data so the GPU can access it quickly, improving speed and efficiency. Finally is AMD's FSR3, otherwise known as the Fidelity FX Super Resolution. It's AMD's version of DLSS, so it uses AI to upscale lower resolution images and generates extra frames for smoother gameplay. Play. Unlike DLSS, it works for most GPUs, not just AMDs. If this video is making PC parts finally make sense, give this video a like and subscribe down below for more beginner-friendly guides. Now RAM or random access memory is your computer's short-term memory. It stores data that your CPU needs right now, like open games, apps, or browser tabs, so it can access it instantly. If your storage drive is a filing cabinet, then RAM is your desk. The more desk space you have, the more you can work on it at once. When you shut down your computer, RAM clears everything. It's designed for speed, not long-term storage. Now you might be asking yourself, what is DDR4 versus DDR5? Let's break it down for you. DDR4 is older, but reliable and affordable. And it also works with many Intel motherboards. DDR5 is the newer, faster standard. It allows higher speeds and uses less power, although it can run slightly warmer. Think of it this way. DDR4 is a dependable car, while DDR5 is a sports car, faster and built for the future. So how much do you need in your use case? If you have 16 gigabytes, it's more than likely for basic gaming and general use. For 24 gigabytes, that's the solid standard for 2025. For 32 gigs, that's ideal for gaming, streaming, and multitasking. If you have 64 gigs or more, that's more for professional video editing or 3D design. Always install RAM in pairs to enable dual channel mode, which doubles performance. Now let's talk about your storage. Storage is your computer's long-term memory. It's where your operating system, games, and files live. When your PC turns off, this is where your data stays safe. There's three main types of storage. The NVMe SSD, which is the fastest, is a slim stick-shaped drive that plugs directly into your motherboard's M.2 slot. It loads Windows and games in seconds. Gen 4 drives are the best value, while Gen 5 drives are faster but more expensive and run hotter. Then you have your SATA SSD, a 2.5 inch drive connected by cables. It's not as fast as NVMe, but it's much faster than hard drives. This is perfect for older systems or extra game storage. Finally, you have your original hard drive, a traditional spinning disk drive. It's slower but offers large amounts of storage at a low price, which is great for videos, backups, and general files. The best setup in our opinion is going to be a one terabyte NVMe for Windows and some games, plus a two to four terabyte hard drive for extra storage. Now the power supply or PSU sends electricity to every part of your computer. It's the heart of your system, keeping everything powered and stable. A poor quality power supply can cause crashes or even damage components. So it's important to get a reliable one. Here are some key points about power supplies. Choose enough wattage. Add up your parts power needs and add an extra 20% for safety. For an example, if your build uses 600 watt, get a 750 watt power supply. You also want to look for an 80 plus gold rating or higher for efficiency and low heat. Also, the new ATX 3.1 standard supports modern GPUs with 16 pin connectors. Here's a pro tip for fully modular power supplies. It lets you remove unused cables for a cleaner build. Stick to trusted brands like Corsair and even Seasonic. Next up is the case and cooling. The case holds everything together and the cooling system keeps it from overheating. If your PC parts are the organs, then the case is the body and the cooling system is the lungs. There's three types of case sizes. First being the ATX, which is a full size that has the most space and is the easiest to build in. Then you have the micro ATX, which is smaller and has fewer expansion slots. Finally, you have your mini ITX, which is compact and stylish but harder to build in. Then you have your cooling, which there's two different types. First off, here's your air cooling, which is simple, quiet, and reliable. Then you have your liquid cooling, which uses a pump and radiator, which is ideal for powerful systems. Cool air should come in from the front and hot air should exit from the back or top. Balanced airflow is more efficient than just adding more fans. Choose a case with good airflow, easy cable management, and enough space for your graphics card and cooling system. Now you have the motherboard. The motherboard is the largest circuit board that connects every component together. 
the CPU, RAM, GPU, storage, and power. It's the backbone or nervous system of your PC. If your PC is a city, the motherboard is the road network that connects every building. Here are some of the main features of the motherboard. First off, it's your CPU socket. It must match your CPU. Intel uses LGA 1700 while AMD uses AM5. Then you have your chipset. This determines how many USB ports, PCIe lanes, and features your board has. Then your RAM slots, which supports either DDR4 or DDR5, not both. Then your PCIe slots for your graphics card and expansion slot. Then your storage connection, M.2 for NVMe drives and SATA ports for older SSDs or hard drives. Then your regular ports, which is for USB, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and audio outputs. Finally, your BIOS, which is the built-in setup program where you adjust settings and update the system firmware. There's three different types of motherboard sizes. There's ATX, which is full size and has the most expandability. Then micro ATX, which is smaller and more affordable. Then the mini ITX, which is very compact and ideal for small build. Here's how to choose your motherboard. Make sure it fits your CPU and RAM type. Check for power slots and ports. Decide if you need built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And finally, choose based on features you'll actually use. Every part of your PC matters, but balance is what makes a system great. A well-planned $1,200 build can outperform an unbalanced $2,000 one. If this video finally helped you understand PC parts, be sure to give it a like and subscribe down below. And if you'd rather just skip the whole building process and get one built for you, be sure to check out Empowered PC. We professionally build and test and then have them ready to play. The best gaming PC isn't the most expensive one, it's what fits your needs. Thank you for watching and have a great one.